The food you eat takes a very long journey through almost your entire body. Along the way, the useful parts of food are absorbed, so its energy and nutrients, while useless or harmful parts are eliminated. In this video, I want to explain the basics of nutrient digestion and absorption. You will learn how our digestive system works, what organs are involved, and at the end of the video, I will show you a few simple tricks that you can use right now to improve your digestion and nutrient absorption. Let's start with a general overview of proper digestion and why it's so important. It makes sure your body gets the nutrients you need from food and drinks to work properly and stay healthy. Proteins, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals are all made available to the body through digestion. Your digestive system breaks them into smaller parts, which are then absorbed and used for energy, growth, and cell repair. For example, the micronutrients are broken down as follows. Proteins are broken down into amino acids, fats are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol, and carbohydrates are broken down into simple sugars. The micronutrients, so vitamins and minerals, are absorbed a little differently, but we will get to that later. First, here are the most important players in your digestive system. It is comprised of the gastrointestinal tract, along with the liver, pancreas, and gallbladder. The organs that make up the GI tract include the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and rectum. Together, your digestive system helps to move food and liquid through your GI tract, break it down, and later absorb it. Let's now have a more detailed look at this process. Everything starts in your mouth, where you chew your food and mix it with saliva. The mouth's saliva includes certain enzymes that already start breaking down the food in your mouth. After you swallow your food, your tongue pushes it into your throat, where it passes into your esophagus. When food reaches the end of your esophagus, it will pass a ring-like muscle that relaxes and lets food pass into your stomach. This muscle is necessary so your stomach content cannot flow back up again. Once food has entered your stomach, the stomach muscles mix it with digestive juices. This will further break down the food and kill bacteria. The liquid mixture is called chyme and will then be sent into the small intestine. The small intestine is where most of the absorption of nutrients happens, so this part will be a little more detailed. The walls of the small intestine are lined with finger-like tissue that absorb water and the nutrients into your bloodstream. I already explained how the macronutrients need to be broken down into smaller nutrient groups, such as proteins into amino acids, to be properly absorbed. I want to explain this in more detail now, starting with protein. Once the acidic food coming from your stomach reaches the small intestine, it now has to be neutralized. This is done with the help of bicarbonate, which acts as an acid buffer. The pancreas also releases more digestive enzymes into the small intestine, so the pre-digested proteins can be further broken down into single amino acids by a process called hydrolysis. During hydrolysis, a water molecule is placed between two amino acids, which in turn breaks their bond. You can think of this process as small scissors, cutting the protein chains into smaller and smaller pieces called peptides and then snipping off the individual amino acids one by one. The amino acids are then absorbed by the small intestine and carried to the bloodstream. From there, they can be sent to any cell throughout your body. Carbohydrate absorption also takes place mostly in the small intestine. Once the carbohydrate chains have been broken down into single molecule sugars, they are quickly absorbed along the upper and lower parts of the small intestine. Small finger-like projections called villi absorb the carbohydrates and send them to the bloodstream where they will be carried to the muscles and liver. Lastly, we have fat, which is a tricky nutrient to absorb. That's because fat is hydrophobic, meaning it doesn't dissolve in water, so your body can't digest it as it does other nutrients. Fat molecules will simply clump together and form one big ball. Bile, which is made by the liver and sent to the small intestine, keeps this from happening. Because bile molecules have a hydrophilic end that binds to water and a hydrophobic end that binds to fat, it hinders the fat from sticking together. This creates a bile-fat mix where lipase enzymes do their work. 
They will break down the fat into fatty acids and glycerates, which pass through the small intestine. By the way, the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K are absorbed using the same mechanisms used for fat absorption. So they are incorporated into the bile fat mix and are absorbed along with it. Water-soluble vitamins are, you guessed it, absorbed along with water, but this also happens mostly in the small intestine. Certain B vitamins, such as folate, biotin, and riboflavin, can also be absorbed by certain cells in the colon, but we don't know exactly how this works. The last group of important nutrients that we need to talk about are minerals. They are also mostly absorbed in the small intestine, but how depends on the individual mineral. Potassium, for example, is easily absorbed by almost all parts of the GI tract, whereas calcium, for example, is taken up mostly by specific receptors, that require vitamin D. Once all the work in the small intestine is done and all the nutrients have been absorbed, the waste products of the digestive process move into the large intestine. What reaches the large intestine is mostly undigested food, fluids, and dead cells from the lining of your GI tract. By absorbing water, the large intestine changes the waste from liquid into stool and sends it to your rectum where store stool is pushed out during a bowel movement. As you can see, the entire process is pretty complex, which is also why I now want to show you how to optimize everything so it flows efficiently. Here are some simple steps to improve your digestion and nutrient uptake. Make sure you eat in a quiet and relaxed environment. This stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for your rest and digest reflex. Also, chew your food thoroughly, as this makes the overall digestion easier because you already break down most of the food in your mouth. If you are supplementing fat-soluble vitamins or want to increase your overall vitamin intake, make sure to eat some healthy fats, such as olive oil, as part of that meal. Also keep in mind that certain acids, such as phytic acid in grains or oxalic acid in beans, can bind to minerals and inhibit their absorption. There are ways to minimize this through soaking or sprouting the grains, for example, so make sure to check them out if you follow a grain-heavy diet. And there are also some optional tips that aren't necessarily based on scientific evidence, but can help in individual cases. First is to try drinking less water with meals, as this can dilute your gastric juices. Most studies on this conclude that it doesn't really matter as long as you don't drink huge amounts of water, but I personally do notice a difference, so I wanted to include it in this video. Another optional tip is to eat the protein portion of the meal first. The idea is that amino acids stimulate gastric acid release. However, I have to say that I don't do this because I think this overcomplicates my eating habits too much and the effect is noticeable, at least for me. And lastly, make sure you have optimal stomach acid levels. Having healthy stomach acid levels is critical to nutrient absorption, gut health, and overall well-being. While many people think they have too much because of their acid reflux, often they actually don't have enough. I explain why in my video on increasing stomach acid naturally, so make sure to watch that too.